I think also we are talking about Iran here as if it were on another planet somewhere and that we were just discussing the virtues or the uh, downsides of this agreement. I don't know how you do that. I don't know how you do that. They're, t they're in control in four countries at least. They recently, in, in Yemen, Syria, Iraq, and Lebanon, recently they're giving weapons to the Taliban in Afghanistan. They're still the world's single most important sponsor of terrorism. Tried to plot to assassinate the Saudi ambassador here in Washington, D.C. And they're going to now get 100, 100 billion, whatever it is. Uh, is, there any, is there any belief whatsoever of anyone? In the, please raise your hand if you think that they aren't going to use a hell of a lot of that money to pursue their hegemonic ambitions in the region. So we're handing them tens of billions of dollars that they can now freely support the Quds Force, uh, uh, extend their, their uh, influence in, in Lebanon, to continue the Houthis uh, in Yemen, uh, whatever activities that they want to continue, motivated by their, of course, Mr. Uh, Soleimani, who takes selfies outside of Baghdad as he leads the uh, Shiite militias and their attempts to regain control of Iraq for Iranian purposes. And by the way, and the, also the individual who was responsible, according to General Dunford, the incoming chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mr. Soleimani was responsible for the deaths of at least 500, count them, 500 soldiers and Marines deaths. I have no idea how many wounded. Mr. Soleimani is gonna have a blank check right now to continue his uh, activities. Um, the world is in chaos, my friends. We are seeing nothing like we have not seen since the end of World War II. We all know that. Does anybody disagrees with that? Of course not. And why did this happen? It's because of the failed policies of this president and this administration. The guy that wouldn't speak up, this president who would not speak up in 2009 when Iranians were demonstrating in the, in the streets of Tehran and a young woman named, ble, named Netta bled to death and we saw her picture and they were chanting, Obama, Obama, you with us or are you with them? And not a word was spoken on their behalf. And so now we see the, the, the Middle East in chaos. But we're gonna treat this agreement as if it took place in some more sterile and less interesting environment. And finally, uh, th let me just say that um, I've seen some bad deals in my time. And I, I've, and I take particular exception to the president telling the American people that there are only two options, war or this agreement. And I can tell you before the Armed Services Committee, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Dempsey said, I can tell you we have a range of options and I always present them. June 29th, 2015, I think there are other options besides going to war. Navy Admiral John Richardson, President Obama's nominee to the, to the next Chief of Naval Operation. So, so I, I, I really am upset about the dis intellectual dishonesty here, that we only have two choices. Obviously there are many others, and that's according to our military leadership. My friends, this is a seminal moment and we need to engage and discuss this entire situation in the Middle East, not just this, but the, the, the deteriorating chaos that, that, uh, that, in, that now envelops the entire Middle East. We need to have that conversation with the American people. Thank you.